Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino, and I'm the editor of the Peter Dac Portfolio since 1977. What I would like to review with you uh, in this video is what is the investment process that I, I like when the economy is weak. What are the parameters that I look at, and how do I use it to manage the por my portfolio and how to manage risk? I think. The most important issue faced by every investor is that to protect your portfolio. Make sure that your portfolio doesn't lose value, or if it does, it's very little. So the, the item number one is to manage risk by being in the right asset classes. What I mean by that, as I will show you later, is you have to be in the right investments investments that do well in a weak economy it doesn't make any sense to be in investment that do poorly in a weak economy the second item is in order to protect your portfolio is to determine when what and how much to invest at any point in time in other words you have to decide when when to do what and then once you decide what to do is how much you have to invest In order to determine how much, when, and uh, what to buy, I look at the, at the business cycle. And the business cycle gives me the growth of the economy and how it relates to the average growth. There are times the economy is going very strongly above the average growth potential, and other times that it's going below potentials. Right now, in 2011-2012, we moved from phase three to phase four, and as of November 2012, we are roughly here. At least that's what I think. I might be wrong, but that's what I think. Actually, other people think the same way, growing very slowly here. Now, the type of investment that you do in periods like this are totally different from periods Two and three, and I discussed this in another video. So this this framework it tells me what to invest, when to invest it. Now the issue is how much. How much is depends on how comfortable you are with what you see in front of you, what the data are telling you. There are. As I said, we are in phase four, 2011, 2012. In November, we are in phase four. And there are certain things that happen when you are in, uh, in, in a slow growth economy or moving into a slower growth economy. The first thing you see is the Fed is easing. Uh, what that means is that the, the, the Fed is forcing interest rates to go, uh, to go down, the yield curve steepens. And that's really what has been happening for the last more than a year. You see commodities declining because there is no demand, the economy is weak. Forget about China, forget about all that stuff. The, the, all the big, major economies are perfectly synchronized, as I said in other videos. But the economy, all commodities decline during the, the slowdown, the phase three and four of the economy. You have lower yields. This is also very important because as yields, the bond yields decline, bond prices rise. So this gives opportunities, profit making opportunities, not just yields, but capital gains. You buy bonds for capital gains, as I said in another video. Of course, you have lower short term interest rates, financial risk is declining in the sense that people feel more comfortable the fed is pumping money so there is enough liquidity to to minimize financial risk and of course because of the slow economy you also have lower inflation this is exactly what has been happening in the last at least the last uh, well since may june july of 2011 into 2012 Okay, how do you use now this information to set up your portfolio? Well, the, the economy is slow, so commodity-sensitive commodity asset classes are very volatile during periods of slow economic growth. I showed in another video what happens to commodities when the economy is weak. Of course, they go all over the map, but usually with, with, a, with a downward bias. The, the, the commodities, uh, the asset classes that are sensitive to commodity prices, they weaken in phase three and four of the business cycle. So really, 
unless you're willing to lose money and, and see your portfolio moving all over the map, you, you don't want to be in commodity sensitive. And the other thing, as I said before, and it's also discussed in detail in another video, bonds offer solid returns, profit ga profits, capital gains, plus yields. They usually provide in phase three into phase four great total returns that should not be ignored. Absolutely. Bonds are not, are not what they, the majority of people think. Bonds can provide superb returns during phase three and phase four of the business cycle. Okay, how do you put all this together and, uh, and establish a, a process to manage risk, to manage your portfolio? Well, as I said, I, I start looking at the business cycle and, and I ask myself two simple questions. I really do, you don't need to make that big of an analysis. Is the economy strong or is the economy is, is, is weak? And as of this you know, November, October, anywhere since uh, mid-2011 to November 2012, the economy was slowing down and the growth was very slow. Then, what what is the level of real interest rates? I, I have on uh, a different video how interest rates impact commodity prices and how the Fed impacts commodity prices. And this gives me an idea what could be the, the long-term trend of commodities. This gives me the short-term trend of commodities. Then based on this analysis, I say, well, what asset classes and stocks do I need? Uh, do I need asset classes that do well in a weak economy or do well in a strong economy? Obviously, I will choose asset classes and stocks that will do well in, uh, in a slow growth economy. I will have a whole video on this subject. Then people use uh, technical models, some type type of models to determine if the market is oversold or overbought, what kind of went up too far or not. So you can have is above the 150 day moving average or below. There are many timing models to help you see if that's a good entry point or not. And there are services, of course, you can subscribe to that provide you with that kind of information. An important thing of the or the process to manage risk is to measure performance. That to me is the most important thing because it tells you if you're doing well or not, if your process is right or wrong, if your choices have been right or wrong. So I, quite frankly, I check it if I can at the end of every day, I see, did I make money or not? And, and then I look into my positions and I say, which ones are performing better and which, which ones are performing the worst? Why? Okay, are they there were good choices that I made or not? Are the ones performing better? The the most positions that I have are ones that are performing better than the market or not? Because otherwise, obviously, I'm selecting the wrong, the wrong stocks or the wrong mutual funds or the wrong ETFs. So measuring the performance and seeing what is performing better than others and why is crucial. And then what do you do with it? You take corrective actions. That is also is the consequence of measuring the performance. So, for instance, you can sell a little bit of the stocks or mutual funds or ETFs that are performing poorly and then transfer the money either to a different investment or transfer the money into a stock that is doing better than the ones that is doing poorly. So you can take corrective actions to measure improve your performance or if some investments are losing money start selling to reduce the, your losses so these two steps are crucial crucial to minimize uh, the losses and to manage the risk of the portfolio this is the kind of process i follow very very closely and i always check it and recheck it at the end of every day this are other investment ideas to, to manage risk and to manage your portfolio. I think the f this is the most important one. Too much diversification is not going to reduce your risk. It's just gonna, going to reduce your performance. Because if you buy stocks or asset classes that do not do well in a weak economy, your performance is going to be 
below average. And not only that, but it will give you a lot of volatility, as I showed you in a in a different video, in a different video. So invest in a few positions and focus on specific strategies and sectors. That is in those investments that do well in this particular instance in a weak economy. The other thing is brokers are not money managers. I talk to, to a lot of people and sometimes I say, my broker is, is a bad broker. Your broker is not a portfolio manager. He's not responsible for the performance of your portfolio. You are. That he's only a broker. He is only giving you investment ideas or when to buy, when to sell. But the ultimate responsibility is yours. So don't be... Don't rely too much on him. He's trying to do his job, but within the limits of his function. The important thing, as I said before, measure your performance and then manage the market value of your portfolio. If you see that your portfolio value goes all over the map and the market goes down, let's say, half of 1% and your, your portfolio goes down 2%, you have your portfolio is too volatile. So you have to change the structure and the type of investments that you that you choose. And the, important, and the consequence of that is that you have to be flexible so whenever you see that something is wrong take action try to minimize the important thing is to minimize your losses if you see underperformance try to understand why is underperforming and reduce your investments in those asset in, in those positions where you have the underperformance and again the, the the idea is that you are trying to manage the steady appreciation of your portfolio from what you have heard is everything is connected the, the the investment process starts with the business cycle is the economy strong or the economy is weak what, what is the direction of, of of interest rates do they support the conclusion that you derived from the look looking at the interest uh, at the business cycle so if the business the economy is going slowly short-term rates should be heading down bond prices should be strong also commodities should be fairly weak therefore only certain stock sectors are which i will discuss in a different video will be attractive during some time and then of course all this boils down to risk and all these items here are all tied together. And this is, should be part of your discipline and of your investment process. Again, I want to thank you very much for reviewing this video. Uh, I have many other videos going into details of each aspect of the, the subjects that I discussed. Again, thank you very, very much for reviewing the video with me, and I hope to see you very, very soon. So long and have a nice day. Bye-bye.